this meeting to order. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, staff to call roll, but I, I, I want to make one little request. We, I, you know, I wasn't really ready to leave the meeting last time. I, I meant to do this, but maybe when you when you sign in and say you're here, just say a sentence or two about, uh, you know, kind of your your uh, goals for on being on this committee, maybe connections to the business community, things like that, just so we kind of have an idea of what resources we have, you know, expertise and resources we have uh, that, that we can call upon. So can we have the roll call, please? Mm -hmm. uh, committee member Carlton? Present. Can you so, tell us just a little bit about the... <laughs> yourself? All right, well, I've been in Albany for about 15 years now. I'm a transplant from Washington and um, haven't had a lot of community involvement, but I've always kind of been interested in doing it. My main community involvement has been supporting local businesses and um, being our block party captain. But Excellent. I'm excited Thank to be you. on it and participate and do what I can do. Excellent. Uh, next is committee member Chasty. Uh, appears uh, absent. Hello, Mark, that is absent. Uh, committee member Green. Here. Um, so I've lived in Albany for 25 or six years. And when my kids were still or kids, I was very involved with the schools. Um, I just closed my business um, in 2020. Um, and I'm an entrepreneur and just interested in, in seeing Albany thrive economically. Thank you. Committee member Hanson Romero. Hi, yes, um, here present. Um, I am a local uh, person, third generation Albany a uh, realtor with Winkler Real Estate Group and president of Solano Avenue Association. Um, so I'm very dedicated to Albany in general and just helping our community and our businesses out. Committee member Petrilli. Um, I'm present. Um, uh, I'm, uh, I guess, a, a restaurant operator. Um, I uh, helped the 1100 Group uh, run Little Star Pizza for about six years. Uh, recently, actually moved on from that position, um, but my my background is in is in business, small business, um, and local restaurants. Um, I was prior to that, I was in Berkeley, so um, I'm excited just to learn about um, the city and. Um, contribute in any way possible to continuing sort of the progress that's been made in Albany just to, you know, there's a lot of um, great businesses that, that operate in this small city. So um, I'm looking forward to participating however I can. Thank you. And Chair Abbott. I am here. Uh, I, I've been in Albany about, uh, I think, 17 years. Um, uh, and I've been involved with, with the Chamber of Commerce, the business community, the SAA for 16 of those or something like that. Um, my entire career has been working in and with uh, kind of local small businesses. Um, so it's, it's a good fit for me and I'm really excited about what this committee might be able to do, helping um, kind of preserve and expand this element of uh, the Albany community that contributes so much to our quality of life. It's not about necessarily business and in income. We all have an advantage from having on Avenue and San Pablo Avenue and just all these businesses here, it, it increases the quality of your life. All right, thank you. And then, sorry, lastly, committee member Smollins is absent, so I just wanted to mark that. Right, very good, very good. Capture that, very good, thank you. All right, first item is uh, approval of the minutes. Folks maybe have had a chance to look at the minutes and just uh, not a lot to look at, just reminding you that these are called action minutes. We're just recording actions taken um, if you want. So I, I recommend take your notes. Is this what I say? Uh, or uh, a review of the video. Can we get a motion to approve the minutes? You'll need to speak up because it needs to be recorded. Um, Sorry. Needs to be audio, audible. I'll, mo no, I'll motion. Motion. Very good. A second. I second. And I was a member Carlton. Thank you. And all in favor? I guess I shouldn't be calling you. Staff is supposed to do that, aren't they? Well, there we go. <laughs> Committee member Carlton? Approved, aye. Committee member Green? Aye. Committee member Hanson Romero? Aye. Committee member Petrilli? Aye. Chair Abbott? Aye. All right. Thank you.
I'll get the hang of this. Give me a few, few sessions. All right, uh, we're now open for public comment. This is for items that are not on the agenda. Uh, our ability to respond is very limited to items not on the agenda, but we certainly want to hear what you have to say. So if there's any uh, members of the public who would like to speak now, raise your hand one way or the other. Thank you. I do see one. Hi there. Hey, this is uh, Nick Pilch. Um, some of you may know me. I was on the just got off the can stepped off the council this past year. Was mayor this past year. Um, uh, welcome to all the new members. Uh, I look forward now that I have more time to sit in on these meetings and listen. Uh, one thing I'd like to point out is that uh, I think the um, committee, if they haven't already, should take advantage of uh, talking to other groups about economic development such as getting a representative of the East Bay Economic Development Alliance, East Bay EDA, in to talk to you, or uh, the California EDA, Cal EDA. I went to the Cal EDA conference, uh, I, I don't know, it was two years ago, um, and they actually have a lot of resources. Uh, oh, it's, it's um, California, uh, uh, shoot, it's a local economic development is what the organization is called, but I can't remember the exact name. Anyway, they have a lot of resources. They'll send people out to, to talk to, to cities about uh, economic development. So um, I, uh, I urge you to take advantage of uh, organizations that exist to help uh, local uh, business development or local economic development. And um, I'll have more to say in some of the other agenda items as well. So thank you. All right, thank you, Nick. Any other comments? Not seeing any, so I think we can move on. Uh, announcements, uh, these are for uh, members or staff to have an opportunity to make announcements. You're, you're muted, Brennan, if you're sorry. sorry. Uh, no, no, no announcements today. Okay. Anybody else? Any other announcements? Um, I do. Sorry. Yes. Um, all of you probably received an email for the advisory body Brown Act training. Uh, if you could mark your calendar, it's on March 18th um, at 4.30. It's 4.30 to 6. Thank you. And the city attorney will be there to... Um, uh, do the Brown Act session and to answer any questions you may have. I have a question if that session will be recorded. I have a conflict that day. Yes, it will be recorded. Uh, the advantage of attending live will be the city attorney will be there to answer questions if you have any. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay, thank you. Yeah, my question was how long it was. You've answered that, so that's perfect. Thank you. Um, all right. Uh, I don't see any presentations, so I think we can move right into our items. Uh, the first item is to review the economic development uh, strategic plan. Uh, Renan, did you have anything to say about this, or were we just going to dive in? I think you could just uh, go ahead and dive in. This, um, I will say this is something that was approved in uh, September 5th, uh, 2017. And so as you can see, you'll when you review it, there's a lot of things that are pre-COVID. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're reviewing it. And, and I'm sorry, do you know much about the process? I know that there's been pe different people were responsible for it and, and like that, but, and, and it goes into, it talks about a little bit, but do you remember, I mean, there was some public outreach and there was some business outreach, do you remember? Yeah, you know, I, I don't, hmm, uh, let me, let me just okay. uh, see, oh yeah, yeah, because I, I will say we could have uh, Jeff Bond answer a few questions as far as uh, that process for the community development, um, but let me just uh, make sure that he's available. All right, so, um, uh, uh, so what I wanted to draw folks' attention to, I mean, th this is a pretty important document, right, it's fairly recent. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, have been involved in the city long enough. I've seen like three of these developed and nothing ever happened. So part of our goal is far, the way I see our goal as part of this committee is make some of these things happen or help some of these things happen. Some already have, they've, they've been doing it, working on it. And some already have, but try to try to get some of the heavier lifts going now. Um, uh, so, uh, I think that, um, since this item is going to be primarily discussion, uh, maybe we should start with public comment in case there's any comment. Uh, I think Nick mentioned he may have some things to say. Maybe give him that opportunity and then we can bring it back for discussion. So I see Nick has his hand up. 
All right, thanks again. Um, Nick Pilch again here. Uh, so uh, I was on the council when we, we approved this and I think it's, it was a, it's a better plan than previous plans. Um, it's much more uh, fact-based. Um, uh, so one thing that the plan calls out for that is really important or calls out that's really important is that uh, there should be a single point of contact uh, for business development, for economic development. As far as I know, that really has not been implement implemented. And I think that that's still an issue. Uh, and, and correct me and staff can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe that staff has, has designated a single point of contact. But uh, it also discusses having a staff member dedicated to economic development, uh, which I think is something we, you know, we really ought to start pushing for. It's been talked about for years and years, but I think that it could, I think it could really do the city a lot of good to have that. El Cerrito finally got around to hiring uh, at least a half-time person to do that. And I think that's the right model. Um, you cannot have, you cannot focus people whose day jobs or other things on economic development if, if their day job is not economic development. So I think that's important. Um, I don't, I, you know, of course, the emphasis on small business is very important. I support our small businesses and I love our small businesses dearly. Uh, but the document actually does talk about more than that. It talks about, it does talk about revenue from businesses and it does talk about expanding the business community in Albany and what sort of things that that might take. Um, and so I think having that sort of forward view uh, is very important as well as uh, robust support for the small businesses. And one thing I want to tout, which is also something that's held dear to my heart, is the San Pablo Avenue specific plan. And if you, I think we, you probably ought to, ought to have a discussion of this if you haven't already. Um, but very briefly, it's a plan to try to build, bring more housing to the San Pablo Avenue corridor to meet our housing needs. Um, and it's funded by, this plan is underway, funded by state grants. Um, and it is focused on housing. The state grants were, uh, uh, were say that the, the you know, that the, the money is, should be spent on, on how, how, on development of housing for, for, you, for the city. But I think this is an opportunity also to uh, ask the business community and maybe the development community, the real estate community, Anyone and everyone who's around, uh, who uh, you know, whose business is business development, to say, okay, well, if you're building housing, what about the ground floor? You know, what kind of businesses can go on the ground floor there to make this also a win-win for Albany? We, we can get the business revenue, create businesses on the ground floor, and accommodate the uh, housing growth that uh, the state requires us to do. So I really ought to thank you. Uh, um, should have a robust discussion of that at some point. Uh, in your future, if not today, and I think I'll stop there. Thank you. As always, thank you for your comments, Nick. Uh, any other public? I, I see Nick is kind of the public right now, so thank you. <laughs> now I used to see Nick as the public. I'm going to say that. Um, all right. Uh, uh, so for, for my money, I mean, really, the interesting stuff starts on page 40. I don't know if folks have had a chance to really look at this, but um, and we have a lot of kind of analysis and kind of what's behind the recommendations, but he gets down, they get down to the concrete recommendations starting on page 40. So um, uh, I was hoping we could just kind of, I'm, I'm planning to just kind of list them off. Um, and yes, Brennan? Oh, I was going to say, feel free if you want me to share the document at any point. So you people... might. Can, is, can you do um, that without too much trouble? Yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Page 40. I have it. Page, uh... Yeah. I'll, well, let's uh... start on, on page 39 then. Okay. All right. All right. So, so this is kind of just the summary. Um, uh, you know, kind of just very high altitude. These are the sorts of efforts we would need to make, and whether they are, you know, low hanging fruit or a heavier lift, just to mix my metaphors. So. Um, uh, I, I, we can just, you know, partner with businesses and residents. Obviously, we can do that. Some of that's already been done. Um, I know that the city has been working to improve the development efforts. I know that the pandemic has forced some things to move online, which is definitely good. Uh, I think you can do pretty much everything online now, which is, is a huge improvement. Um, and then target retail restaurant for business attraction. That's kind of part of what Nick was talking about. 
we can do that, but we need to kind of think about what kind of retail and restaurant is going to be a good fit and kind of recruit those uh, more infill development. Obviously, that's an ongoing process uh, and is in a lot of different organizations or bodies' interest. Um, upgrade the built environment, uh, uh, infrastructure, customer service, and improve the customer service improvement process. I mean, that's a uh, uh, short mid, um, and that's pretty important. You know, from the chamber and the SAA, we, we've worked with a lot of people opening businesses, operating businesses, and sometimes they rave. Oh, this is the smoothest experience I've ever had. It, it's been great. All my questions were answered. And sometimes it's not. And so we, we want to try to get more, we want, you know, Ideally, what we would have is Albany having a reputation in the area for being easy to work with. And, um, and you know, that doesn't mean being lax. That doesn't mean letting people slide and not follow the rules. It just makes it, it means we're making it easy for them to follow the rules. That's really what our goal should be there. Any, anybody want to chime in? I tend to run kind of casual meetings. So if, if you have something to say, feel free to just kind of raise your hand and, and, and jump in if I don't recognize you. All right. All right. So let's go on to, to page 40 then. And down well, at the I was bottom. Gonna, I was going to jump yeah. in there, Todd. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. Um, and just something to be aware of. I know that we're talking about, you know, infill and, you know, building additional units, residential on top of commercial. Sorry, I got BART going. Please hold. It's a BART pause. <laughs> Not. Not the best place to take a meeting, but this just happened to work out at this point. So um, one of the things that I do want to point out is uh, in the real estate world, uh, we have seen multiple times with uh, residential above and businesses below, and we've, they've had a hard time filling the businesses below. And that is something to definitely be looked upon and really see like what businesses, if, if you're going to do commercial on the lower level and residential up, up at top, you really have to really be targeted to who you're going to be inviting in those, um, those units on the ground floor, because um, on several occasions, they have reconverted um, the commercial spaces into residential because they just can't fill the commercial spaces. So I just want to I, I want to put that up in the periscope and just make sure that everybody's aware of that that that's not always an ideal development. So yeah, all right, thank you, thank you. Um, any other? Maybe want to chime in now. All right, all right, uh, Brennan, maybe put up the the bottom of page forty. And, you know, realizing that we have a work plan discussion coming up in a little bit, maybe, you know, that this can kind of make us uh, think a little bit about these things. So offer support uh, uh, for large employers. So it's talking about things like um, providing maybe the community center for a job fair or when Target is hiring uh, or, or something like that around the holiday hiring. Um, just trying to let the city be a resource for the businesses as well. Um, uh, as well, not as well, obviously, but uh, uh, finding ways that we can basically make friends with our large employers. Uh, we want them to stay, we want them to expand, and so that would be something we can do. Uh, uh, convene initial meetings of like businesses, encourage them to continue meeting and communicating on their own, so, or with one of the organizations. Now, this is something I, I just wanted to take a minute and mention about this committee. This committee is intended to be, as created to be, a little bit more of a working committee than most of the city bodies. Uh, the idea was that um, uh, Albany, as, as, as you know, Nick was just mentioning, Albany hasn't had an economic development department or a person, let alone a department. So the idea was that this committee could kind of focus the efforts of, of the chamber and the Slano Association and, you know, input from city staff. And I guess now we, we have uh, in Albany Inside Out even and kind of serve as a focus, a focal point, and kind of help coordinate efforts there. So this is something that um, all the groups could work together on, creating, you know, the chamber has mixers and with the SAA, things like that, but they're general mixers. I like the idea of having events that are, here's just the restaurant owners. 
uh, or here's just the, the, the retail, because um, there are specific issues related to the types of businesses. So that's something we could certainly do. And that's some way that this committee could kind of drive uh, or, or you know, ask of the other organization. Anybody have any thoughts? I'm talking a lot. I think that's gonna kind of be the way it goes tonight. <laughs> but feel free again. All right. Uh, next page, it uh, build on the popular of Albany Local Week. Uh, I'm sure we're all familiar with Albany Local Week uh, as residents. Certainly the ever popular, very popular dinner with Albany, which hopefully will be back probably next year, if not this year. Um, I don't think I'm ready to have that on an e odd year. It's always got to be an even year, so it'll be next year. Um, uh, but that is a way for the city to, you know, it's not only an opportunity for the city to integrate with the uh, the residents, but also uh, with, with the business and bring them in. And I know there's been efforts over the years to try to do that and maybe kind of work a little, little more on that and try to try to, uh, to bring them in even more. I'm not sure we've gotten a whole lot of engagement. We get some engagement from some restaurants. Um, I mean, but I'll be honest with you, uh, restaurants and businesses on the other end of the avenue hate it because they're dead that day. Um, they get no business. And so it's actually negative to them. And, and, and they, you know, the, you know, just how complicated it is. Albany Cleaning Center, well, they rely on all day parking or long-term parking for, you know, long enough for people to do their laundry and it's gone that day. So it's kind of a dead day for them. So it's, it's you know, um, finding that, I'm not saying we shouldn't do it. I'm not saying it's not a good thing, but, but just keep in mind that um, uh, we need to do things to make it welcome for, for, you know, as many businesses as we can. Recognizing that there's, you know, there's people are gonna be inconvenienced. It's not gonna work anyway. Uh, not much we can do about that. Initiate a marketing campaign targeting resident. Uh, so this is kind of, uh, you know, marketing, again, I'm going to use this phrase again, via low-hanging fruit. Our residents already know about us. It's easier to get them to come down uh, than to reach out and try to bring people in from outside of the city. So uh, uh, raise awareness of shopping locally. I, I have a hard time with the phrase shop local because that means if I'm in Berkeley, I should go home and shop there. I want people to find it in Albany. I want them to shop in Albany. We're, we're too small to say shop local exclusively. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, but anyway, just, just a, a campaign to uh, uh, get folks to uh, kind of take advantage of what the businesses have to offer. Uh, any thoughts on uh, that, I guess, I completely one. agree with you with the shop local, Todd. I think it was, you know, it's kind of like uh, when we first got into COVID and it was like, um, uh, what was this, six feet apart? And then it was like, no, actually, you need to distance apart. Like there, were, there was some verbiage around that that it wasn't quite right. And I think the shop local campaign kind of got kicked off thinking shop local was a good thing, but when, yeah, when you think about it, it's like, okay, go home and shop local, but no, we really want to emphasize like shop while you're here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Um, any other thoughts? All right. Uh, so goal two is improve city halls, proactive efforts to support business growth and uh, I create a webpage, how to start a business only, which they have done. Um, and it's got some basic information. And that's great. And obviously having, uh, you know, a single point of contact and, and uh, so, 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 so Brennan, just, just on that single point of contact, would you be considered the single point of contact at this point, or would it be, you know, you're, you're just the liaison for the, for the uh, committee? I am the liaison for this committee. Yeah. There, there's not a, a single point of contact at this point. Well, I would so, be, uh, I just want to mention oh. that I would be the single point of contact at this time for any economic development questions or, um, so we did uh, create a economic development email that comes directly to me um, if, uh, when questions come up. Okay, so if somebody had a question about their business license, you could either answer it or direct it to whoever it needs to go to. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, great. Yes. Great. Mm -hmm. great, perfect, thank you. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, promote small business training. This is, I think, a lot of, uh, or, or I think even Nick was just kind of referencing this. There are a lot of resources. And we've done, I mean, I know the Chamber and the Islam Association have done this certainly through the pandemic um, with the, uh, the SBDC and, uh, and other organizations. Uh, uh, we actually had a, uh, a webinar for um, early on about being safe during the pandemic in your business. And uh, 
the, somebody from the state came down and said, man, this first one, this is great. You, you guys are ahead of the curve on that. So that was really valuable. We happen to have a resident who was an expert in that. He, he approached us. He worked out really well. Uh, biannual business survey, uh, just to, um, you know, kind of uh, see what, collect what data we can, how things are going. Uh, as you know, that's another item that's on our agenda. We're obviously doing that. Uh, centralize and tracks business indicators. Uh, yeah, track and, and report key measures of business growth. Sales tax by sector. Is that something the city is doing or? Uh, which piece, Tom? Oh, this is um, uh, gather and report annually to the city council key measures of business growth, such as public ver version of the quarterly sales tax report. Uh, employment in Albany, sales tax by sector, business licenses by sector. Um, I, I believe that our finance director does provide some of that information of as part of her quarterly reports to the council. And, it, and it's just part of the overall report. Is, mm -hmm. is, is yes. Available. Okay. 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 So may, I mean, I guess, the, I guess this suggestion, if we wanted to do this would be to, you know, pull out the economic development related ones and it says presented to this committee and then also the council. Um, or even put it on the website. I'm not sure how public it needs to be. Uh, okay, identify one staff person that is first in point of contact. We just did that. So we've done that one. Thank you, Isabel. <laughs> All right, uh, uh, goal three. Again, feel free to jump in or if you have any questions or want to make a point, welcome to have, hear it. Uh, target new business that are retail and restaurants or that provide a new amenity or choice. Uh, communicate the targets, commercial products. Now we're now we're kind of into recruiting business. So uh, 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 Member Hans Romero was talking about the, the challenge we've had historically of filling ground floor retail. And I think we've probably all noticed that we've all been in, in Albany a while. We've noticed, you know, uh, right down the Portland and San Pablo, that building went up and it was a vacant ground floor retail for a long time. Um, and so I think kind of the city's thought was, well, that's kind of the developer's problem, but maybe we can take a little more active role and recruit, identify and recruit, uh, send, send somebody to a trade show or, you know, identify, possibly, you know, kind of be a little more proactive in filling those spaces. Well, and Todd, that was part of that Braxton group that I had mentioned right, right. prior to. We just didn't have a time to actually put together the webinar prior to this meeting but that still is very much on my agenda to do. Um, and so once we can identify a meeting, this was something that was actually uh, brought to me by a friend of mine who was on the Hayward City Council, who um, when they went to redevelop uh, downtown Hayward, they used this company to identify and target certain businesses that were uh, more in line with the community um, and were successful um, in opening because they were identifiable that this is what the community is looking for. This is a targeted reach. Um, it has a lot of data and analysis to it, uh, analytics. It and um, so I'm very eager to get a hold of their presentation and hopefully bring it to the next month's um, Economic Development Committee as a full presentation. It, it certainly sounds like a work plan item. So that's good. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Member Carlton? Um, yeah, I had a question, um, I guess piggybacking on what Jennifer was saying earlier about having a hard time reach or attracting businesses to, in the, to the mixed use. And do you have any, um, and maybe it's part of the, the presentation that they could do, um, is if there's any sort of statistics or reasons why you know, businesses are not attractive. Is it the, you know, the mixed use? Is it the, you know, the layout or the sizing? Or I'm just wondering if there was some, any sort of common themes or, you know, main things that could be addressed as to what the problems with the mixed use buildings were and retaining or attracting commercial businesses. I, I would, I would pose that if, if staff, maybe Isabel or Jeff or, or, or Brennan may have some input on that, something to say. And no, I don't have any information on that. Okay. Mm -mm. Okay. I see Jeff has raised his hand. Maybe you can. Uh, sorry, just one moment. Wanna... Sure. All right. Good afternoon, committee members. Uh, my name is Jeff Bond. I'm the community development director. And um, 
we have done some work in that area specific and actually uh, Nick Pilch in his public comment referred to the San Pablo specific plan. We did have a consultant come to um, a planning session for that effort back in September, September 23rd. And um, she's a specialist in retail uh, real estate. And she gave a presentation on some of the, the challenges of the design and placement of the ground floor retail. Um, I don't have all the details right in front of me, so I, I couldn't go into it right now, but that might be a good starting place. And, and I can provide Brennan the link to the video for that and the staff report and her, her presentation. Um, and she, you know, she talked about this importance of being on the corner, the um, ceiling heights, so on and so forth to make that space viable for different types of businesses. Yeah, I would, I would, I would add um, that uh, I watched. It's it really that the portion of that meeting is about half an hour, and I would definitely recommend everybody here to watch it. It's fascinating. It's very informative. Uh, one of the messages that I, I remember was that um, uh, commercial developers are different from residential developers. Residential developers don't like to give up that ground floor retail because that's more living space or or, or resources, and they're not necessarily experienced or adept at attracting recruiting businesses. Uh, so if, if we want that, if we want to have that lively down, you know, ground floor retail, then I think the organizations and the city might need to be a little more proactive and help them fill those spaces. Uh, uh, that's just kind of my, my read on that. And I, I think also what Jeff was just reminding us about, um, you know, the corners and, and so really kind of focus where it may not be appropriate everywhere. It may not work everywhere. So kind of think about key locations. We want that and, and, and you know, make sure it happens there and it's successful there. Uh, and then, um, you know, that might be the best we can do. Right. So yeah, I definitely recommend folks watch, you know, again, it's like half an hour is the, the key portion. It's at, at, and it's at the beginning, fortunately, of, of that. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Uh, it, I think it's also helpful to take a look at, um, you know, larger commercial developments like shopping malls and stuff like that. There's always, um, there's always just much like stores when they're planning out the way that they merchandise things, there's planograms involved. They set these areas up and they know that uh, certain parts of the store are going to be more attractive to certain things. And they know that they need anchoring items and anchoring items are another thing that goes into, uh, you know, shopping plazas and malls and and that's not that different from a commercial shopping district is you want to be able to have those anchors that attract the people there and um, add to the, um, the shoppers or the clients or the customers to the other local businesses. Uh, so without the Safeways, without the CVSs, without the Starbucks, you know, the those businesses are, are truly working as anchors and in, in reeling people in to shop more locally. So I just want to make sure that we, we keep that in, in our sites of planning and developing businesses along Albany. All right. Thank you. Uh, okay. Um, I think we've kind of covered section or goal three. We've, we've talked about each of the three items they've, they've listed here. So, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Tom, uh, yeah. Yeah. Do we have, um, what's like the resource for understanding what vacancies and planned developments are already or exist? Do we have like a, I don't know, a Rolodex of existing vacancies and or upcoming developments? Or are we speaking? I don't know. I think that would well, be an important starting point. Yeah. Uh, staff, do you have, I mean, there's, it's on a website, right? Isn't, doesn't this commercial vacancies on the website? Yes, but I don't know how uh, well updated those uh, are at this point. Um, yeah. Yeah. We'd have to, I think it needs revisions. And, uh, and, and we certainly know there's going to be a lot of turmoil, um, mm -hmm. but, but probably the best resource uh, although it only covers Solano Avenue, is the Solano Avenue Association. Um, you know, uh, the director walks up and down Solano Avenue uh, three times a week, and, and he notices uh, and, and records the vacancies. Um, primarily, you know, 
we're able to capture the ground floor. We don't always know, you know, there's all, there's multiple stories. We don't necessarily know if there's an office open, but, um, but if we're looking at the ground floor retail restaurant spaces, then, then that, that would be a good resource, um, uh, which I, I believe he, he uh, provides that to the city and that that's part of what, in, you know, goes up on the website. The website. I think it'd be important as to review that as, as, as a group. Yeah. No, I think so. And that, that's a good suggestion. And, and uh, as far as kind of a list of upcoming developments, um, I don't, maybe, I'm sorry, staff can, t is that public, publicly available or is that listed anywhere, you know, upcoming or in process commercial development? Uh, I think they become public when it goes before council. Right, uh, but any anything in the works into in community development would, um, you know, would be made public when it comes before council at this point. And 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 when it, but that doesn't necessarily mean it goes up on a website somewhere. Like here are the the upcoming developments. You just have to you'd have to go and look for it. I'm, I'm I believe thinking. so. I don't know if Jeff is still yeah. there. <laughs> to, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, talk you probably have to more about that process. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there may be reasons you don't publicize it. Uh, I, I was just, just interested because I think that is valuable um, if, if we're going to be looking at these issues to know what vacancies there are and what plans are in process. I think that's really yeah, and if we're going to play a supportive role in any form or fashion, then you know, knowing what's what's up, upcoming and what's existing is, is going to be important for us. Excellent, excellent. All right, no, that's those are good points. Should we make some sort of plan to? to collect and organize that data and maybe share that amongst the group or? So um, that, that would be, um, I mean, if you had some kind of overarching goal in mind, that could be a work plan item. Otherwise we might make it an agenda item. Uh, so at the end of the meeting, we open up for agenda items and you can say, you know, we'd like to have a report on, um, you know, vacancies and, and, uh, uh, you know, development, up kind of development. And it might not happen the following, you know, it'll happen eventually. It may not happen the next month, you know, because everybody's got work to do. But um, uh, uh, if we wanted to make it part of a, you know, a city resource that's always on the website, it's all always updated, it, it's all that. So that would be more of a work plan item or, or it would, because that that is going to require effort probably on, on multiple fronts uh, to make happen. And just, just to be sure, when we put something on the work plan, it doesn't mean it's going to happen. It means it goes to council and they have to say whether they want to expend city resources on it or not. Understood. They may well say, no, we don't know. But that's, that's you know, we're, we're an advisory committee. We don't do anything ourselves. We just <laughs> well, yeah. I well, think we I, I agree to. with Michael. I'd, I'd like oh, yeah, to make yeah. that part of, part of that work plan. Well, I, I suspect that... Um, uh, right. No, and, and, and well, we could. And, and I suspect that, uh, you know, we're going to be talking about strategic things and we're talking about the brochure and things like that. I think that what we're talking about here is going to inform all of that. So I think it's going to be a key piece, maybe not on its own. Right. It's just going to be a part of, of, of all the other things. Yeah. Because um, I think that's a really important information. To get. Well, and what's more, if we're trying to track businesses, you want them to be able to easily see what's available and, and what's coming in. That, that's part of the marketing message. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, more infill development, uh, business attraction. This is goal four. Run in page 44. Uh, yeah. Is there any infill actually planned? That was my question. Sorry. Yeah. Is there anything sort of... that can be shared with the committee that we know is coming down the pike? Maybe Jeff could say yay, yay or nay on that one. Brennan, you're muted. I, you see, you're mm, sorry. Just one moment. I just need a. I have to stop. I'll do, I'm going to do a stop share. Um, there is, um, there is um, on this on the city website. There is a um, a page that provides uh, information on submitted planning applications, and it includes not only business applications but also residential. But um, if you go to, uh, I don't know, Brennan, if you want to go there right now. Yeah sharing your mm -hmm. screen but if you go to the departments mm -hmm. and uh planning and zoning mm -hmm. and then submitted planning applications yep okay i'll share now this is 
So this is basically the website where uh, the city posts applications mm -hmm. received. Well, there Wonderful. we go. Thank they you. Provide information yeah. on action and the project type. So this actually brings me to another question is uh, once these applications are either approved or denied, do we send out some sort of a survey like, did you find this easy? What were your complications? Like, I, I kind of would like to know, regardless of whether their plans get approved or denied, like, what were their challenges? Uh, what could we have done better? Uh, why did they either decide to move forward or not move forward? So these are kind of some things that I'd like to hear from businesses that are applying for uh, these spaces um, of development. That actually seems like one of the roles that the chamber or the SEA could do, that we could approach uh, uh, the recently um, actioned, <laughs> approved or denied, uh, uh, and, and you know, uh, provide a survey or kind of an exit interview sort of situation or, or just kind of see analysis. Um, I'm not sure that the city wants to expend the resources um, uh, to create and track that data, but it's certainly something we could do. And it, it gives us, and I think what I like, it gives the organizations an opportunity to kind of introduce themselves to the, uh, to the business. I think it's a good in many fronts. <laughs> it does, but I also would like to see like if there were things that we need as city and development and planning and and all else. Um, well, we can, we can, we can ask, we can make whatever question we want. That's what I like. <laughs> yeah. gotcha. I mean, this, this, this body, this committee could come up with a questionnaire and then, then, then uh, the that would be great. I, I think that yeah. would be important. Yeah. 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 I mean, uh, okay. is it parking? Is it, you know, a, a preschool around the corner? Is it a number of things that, yeah. 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 Well, I also like, I, you know, uh, I was saying that the city likely doesn't have the resources to put together a, a, a you know, kind of exit questionnaire. Um, I know they don't have the resources to go interview the person. And that, again, is something that the organizations could do. Um, and that's where you're going to get some really, you know, even more valuable uh, information, even if it's not easily quantifiable. I'm sorry, Member Petrelli, Petrelli, did you have your hand up for a second? No, okay. Anybody else? I thought I saw some motion. Okay. All right. Very good. Uh, so, uh, goal four is this is kind of a lot of things that we've we've kind of mentioned already. Uh, uh, outreach, um, you know, identify a specific location or a, a, an industry that might be good for location, and then you know, kind of look for folks in that industry. Uh, go to trade shows, perhaps advertise in, in on websites or publications. Uh, it says uh, think about some zoning code changes. Uh, allowed use, uh, remove obstacles, or uncertain about development in those areas. That might be something that we we would, you know, that that would be something that we might recommend or request the Planning and Zoning uh, Commission look at uh, if it hasn't been reviewed or I mean, this is a couple of years old. But again, that's something that we'd say, hey, you know, we see this issue. It might help us, and they could consider it. Consider undertaking a San Pablo Avenue area plan with EIR. Well, that's that's the I, I believe that's kind of the specific plan that that uh, Nick kind of uh, uh, drove or, or is driving, uh, but initiated and is still going. Which I think we do need to be uh, an active uh, participant in that process. Okay, uh, goal five: upgrade built environment. That's Page 45, yeah. Uh, develop a plan for new benches and bus shelters, kind of streetscape. Uh, as, as a member of the Blue Glove crew, I can say that some of these street features are not particularly appealing at this point. Uh, we have seen some motion in that the city uh, uh, in the last, I'm gonna say six months, removed some of the unsightly uh, newspaper racks. Um, and that was a big improvement. Uh, there was a time they were necessary, but that time died when the internet came around. Um, uh, require a high level of design quality for new development citywide, especially on San Pablo. 
uh, yeah, so so just just providing you know kind of a higher standard for for improvements that are made uh, in our commercial districts. Develop a civic signage program or Im implement an expanded wayfinding program. And this is something that I've I've talked about uh, in terms of the parks uh, on the Parks and Rec Commission for several years. Just um, uh, for the parks, the issue is reducing the number of signage and just using the signs we need. Uh, this is, you know, kind of give the, the the commercial districts a little branding. You'll have some identity and some wayfinding, and uh, it's welcoming. You know, if somebody gets there, they see the sign, and it, it helps them feel welcome and directs them. Uh, especially uh, if we're starting to think about wayfinding for uh, uh, bicyclists, bicyclists and other uh, forms of transit or tra transportation. Uh, public art, um, the public art program, uh, work with the arts committee. There's, there's been a lot of talk about that and there has been some joint efforts. Yeah, there we go, 5D. 5E, now this is interesting. I thought this is very uh, interesting observation. Off-street parking, uh, that um, the, the, the spaces in, the commercial spaces in Albany don't tend to be a whole lot bigger than the residential spaces. There are a few larger ones and where there is opportunity, we need to try to maximize uh, the off-street parking uh, to, to get, you know, uh, and, and, and try to negotiate so that other folks can use, you know, people going to other businesses can use that parking as well. Uh, that's probably heavier lift, but, but uh, I, I think that's gonna be an important factor. Uh, on street parking again this would be something that the the this committee could consider and if we thought it was important we could make recommendations uh, to consider raising time limits on San Solano and San Pablo to at least two hours uh, preferably three where it's currently 90 minutes now that's that's a fraud issue some businesses want it shorter uh, some businesses like the theater and the laundromat want it longer um, uh, the restaurants probably like the 90 minutes uh, but what do you, would you have a, an opinion on that, uh, member Petrilli? You like the restaurant likes ninety minutes. You're muted. Sorry, but uh, yeah. Um, yeah, you you nailed it. It's um, restaurants ninety minutes is great. Movie theaters dislike ninety minutes, right? Yeah, it's yeah. Just the, not long the restaurant they want they want people to have time to enjoy their meal, but then get out and open up the space for other people. <laughs> so that's, yeah, that's about. And obviously, a theater. Uh, wants them to be there for the whole show. All right. Uh, so we may want to. Yeah. yeah, I know that that on the on the on the issue of restaurants and just with this COVID world, I think that uh, even shorter term um, sort of pickup only parking would be something that might be added to this um, to the five F. So the fifteen minute parking spots, um, sort of, um, you know every 10, 10 slots or whatever, you know, and businesses would have to apply for this and, 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 you know, advocate on their behalf to have a, a 10 minute or 15 minute spot. But I think that this, that, that is something that I'm sure that some of the businesses on, on Solana would appreciate um, just for the, the curbside pickup and so on and so forth. Yeah, no, it's, I think that's really interesting. And, and it'll be interesting to see how, um, you know, things change now. It might continue to be a real demand, not to mention, you know, the ride share services and things like that. Yeah. Uh, speaking on on that, you know, as an example, uh, Zaytoon, I was there um, having dinner with a client the other night and I was shocked and astonished at how many pickup orders or DoorDash or what any delivery service or just people on their own picking up um, food to go were using this residential driveway to block. I mean, had anybody been coming home at that time, probably would have been pretty livid at the fact that every 10 seconds, I, I counted over uh, 50 cars using that residential driveway to s pull into and stop just to pick up orders. It was really crazy to me. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's, I mean, that's an excellent reason why uh, when restaurants can open up inside, you know, fully, um, 
they're going to want to kind of revert the, the the parking spaces they've taken for dining kind of back because they need the parking as much as anybody they need the parking too. So, um, uh, but I, I think that's an excellent excellent point. It's something we need to keep in mind is, is kind of an increased need for a short term parking. All right. Uh, improve customer service, streamline business. For this is goal six. Uh, this is now talking more about uh, kind of the the, the city itself. Uh, uh, regularly update city handouts and websites. We just, you know, Isabel is just saying she wasn't really sure how up to date the vacancies list is, and 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 there's just no two ways around it. That's resource, right? That's just time, and and that's something that the city is is going to find increasingly scarce. But um, again, I mean, maybe it's something the the organizations can help with. Uh, um, I think that if we generated the list, the city could find the, the, the you know, would be able to, to post it to the website. Uh, business license process improvements, home-based business approval streamlining, publicized improvements and successes. That's a good point too. Um, I know, for instance, that uh, the city has done an excellent job, again, of making a lot of these services more accessible by moving them online. Um, they should be really broadcasting that. That's, that's a big step. That's valuable. And, and, um, uh, I think that, you know, the, so be sure that people understand and appreciate the things that are getting better. Uh, and I know that also, I also, I also, you know, just know I've, I've picked up that, that the, the city is um, making a real effort to kind of improve customer service, you know, to the degree that's the word you want to use, but, but um, uh, being more responsive and, 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 uh, uh, you know, cover, customer service oriented uh, at, at the key locations. All right, that's um, is that the uh, that was kind of what I wanted to talk about. Is there anything else that folks wanted to mention on the strategic plan? If if you didn't get a chance to kind of look over, I def definitely recommend that you do. There's some really interesting demographic information and kind of history and uh, valuable stuff. That you, can, you know. It's pretty long. You might need to skim it, but that's okay. You'll find uh, portions that you really want to dig into. That's great. Any other comments or questions? Um, yeah, I I enjoyed reading this, um, and I enjoyed you presenting it as well. So I appreciate your <laughs> your uh, your review of it. Um, I think it's important for us to sort of digest it and and create some action items so that, that we can be as effective as possible. Cause you know, some of these have already been successful and some of them need um, maintenance and, and upkeep. Um, and then I think there's some that, that, you know that we can really sort of, sort of tackle. Um, I have notes and so I might bring up some questions later but um, thanks for presenting in this fashion. And I think that this is a great tool for us just to, to keep referencing um, over the coming months. Absolutely. I think this is, you know, one of the one of the things I had for for the uh, a work plan suggestion was to develop, the, you know, a document like this, basically, it's like, well, no, we've already got it. I can scratch that one out. So I would just just take a minute, your, your, your point about work plan. I, so so maybe, you know, if there's anything that you you folks kind of jumped out at you that, oh, yeah, that's really important. As we were talking, as we kind of went over, go ahead and start. When we start talking about the work plan, let's bring that back up and look at it, because these, these are going to be key, key pieces. I, I think I, I have a bit of confidence in this. I mean, we kind of need to, to, to think about it in terms of what's going to change, you know, vis-a-vis -vis what, how, you know, the new different as we're calling it. Um, uh, but, uh, uh, but I think this can be a very valuable document for us. Going forward. Uh, Todd, would this be something that maybe perhaps we could do a subcommittee on so we could actually gain a little bit more traction get a little bit more teeth in this so that when we meet again next month we can actually hit the ground running a little bit better with like okay we've identified these items as low-hanging fruit and we're just going to take care of this right now um, as opposed to certain items that maybe we bring back up to the committee and be like okay we need to you really discuss this and talk more about it. I mean, what's your thoughts there? Yeah. Um, so basically, the uh, you're you're suggesting there'd be a subcommittee uh, that would uh, look more closely at these things and number one, kind of check off the things that have been done. Uh, 
and and then uh, bring back some kind of recommended priorities, maybe. Uh, yes, a little correct, report. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that's a, a good idea, and then that would certainly inform. You know, the, I keep mentioning the work plan, and that's this isn't a one-time thing. This is going to be a process. I think correct. it's approved uh, in the new. Uh, you know, just before, you know, April, May. So, um, well, no, that's, that is pretty soon. June. <laughs> that's a it's going to go faster life. the older we get. No. <laughs> well, it goes plenty fast already. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, all right. So, so if, if we were going to do that, we're going to have some sort of effort outside of this meeting. It would need to happen this month because we need to bring it back next Yeah, month. and so I would like to maybe recommend that maybe Michael Petrelli and I could work on something like this. Michael, would you be open to that? I'm, I'm open to that, sure. Awesome. I'd be happy to. And, Steph, how many folks can we have on a subcommittee, this body? For this? Okay, Isabel. Okay. Um, well, it's a seven member committee, so you can have um, subcommittees of three, of up to of three. three. Okay. Okay. So, is anybody else interested? Uh, member Green? All right. You're on. <laughs> Excellent. All right. So, um, and then uh, 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 Jennifer, you want to take the lead and kind of communicate and, and, and get things going? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's all right. Yeah. All right. Excellent. Great. I like that. So now we have an agenda for next time. <laughs> Yay. It's important. All right. The one, one question, worried, you know. Yeah. Yes. There, there was one thing that, that, that sparked my, um, uh, that, that I was thinking about was that I, I'm, I'm wondering what Amy is going to be doing with the Albany Inside Out um, post. I mean, in, in summertime. Um, because she's successfully developed a, a, a pretty strong network of, of businesses who are pretty active um, and I'm wondering if we could channel that somehow into something unique and new as well. Um, but I don't know. That was no, just I, I, that, th yeah. There's a reason I, I include, I mean, you've kind of put your finger on the reason I, I was sure to include them when I was talking about kind of the, the groups that, that this body can help kind of um, uh, coordinate with. And so, so I definitely think that that can be a part of it. Um, obviously, Amy's not here to answer your question, but but I, I'm sure yeah. that they would be interested in in helping in multiple ways. And and Let's their how we could help uh, yeah yeah their presence on the street and their connection is very loud. Yeah. Okay. Anything else before we move on? All right. Great. Thank you. Item uh, six two: the business survey. Uh, so obviously that's something that was mentioned in the strategic plan and it was uh, released, I, th I think, the first time last year. Is that correct? Um, and so what we want to look at, I think, well, I, I think let's, let's look over the results and, and feel free if you want to look over in more depth, feel free to suggest that. But I'm just kind of feeling, let's, let's kind of look over the results. Uh, quickly, but you know, as they are as of last summer. Well, things have changed a lot since last summer, and they're going to continue changing. Um, and we need to be thinking a little more forward thinking. You know, pull what we can out of that. Pull any kernel, you know, nuggets of, of some direction we can from that. But primarily, be thinking about a new survey uh, and the sort of questions we want answers to, and the best way to get those answers. I'm not always sure a survey is the best way to do it. So let's let's get. Okay. You, can you bring up those? Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Brennan. Go ahead. For this, I'm going to pr promote Jeff Bond to, to uh, kind of share the survey. Oh, okay. Excellent. Excellent. And I also wanted to mention that we have also uh, provided uh, the questions that were asked as a draft for a springboard for your conversation on potential uh, questions of, for a future survey. Excellent. Thank you. So uh, good evening, everyone, again. Um, my name is Jeff Bond. I'm the Community Development Director. And um, I imagine myself or Ann Hirsch in our department or others may be coming to some of your meetings from time to time. We, we always enjoy the chance to tell you about what's going on in our world. Um, so what I'm going to do today is just give you a real quick thumbnail of an overview of a, of a survey that we did last summer um, in, and presented to the committee in July. And I'm gonna do that by sharing my screen. Um, 
I think you saw the as part of your materials for the meeting. You saw the the questions that were asked, and this is kind of a a overview of what we thought were the most interesting responses. Um, let's see here. There we go. Um, so this is um, primarily the responses you'll see are primarily from businesses on Solano Avenue. Um, I forget exactly the number of businesses that we sent it to now, but um, if you're interested in the, the gory details of the survey, if you go back to the July 2020 committee meeting agenda materials that are posted, there's an Excel spreadsheet that actually has all the questions and all the answers and, and have it, has it numerically ranked. And I could pull that up if, if needed for today, but I suspect you wanna move on to talking about the next survey rather than, than last year's. Um, this was a kind of an um, overarching question about how they're operating. Um, and again, you can see the percentages. I don't think there were any big surprises here. Uh, you know, most were at this point in time operating remotely and online and or online. Um, only a few, only 10% were operating without significant modifications. And then over the 15% were just not operating. <clears throat> um, this is an overview of the types of modifications that businesses were implementing. Again, this was in June. So it was a little bit before the big August, September surge, and obviously the, the bigger December surge. Um, and um, you know, online is is the was the, the focus for most of those folks. Um, this was a um, kind of a trying to look forward to the, what, the a question to look, try to anticipate what they might need to be working on in the future, and um, you can see that businesses were thinking a lot about how to regulate and manage the number of customers on site. And um, again, I don't think there are any, as we look back, there weren't any huge surprises about this. Uh, this is the, the uh, impact on employment. And, um, you know, obviously that's kind of the, a key factor in, in economic development is we're trying to get people jobs for people. And how is this affecting people that live, whether they live in Albany or not, they, they certainly live in the community and they're part of the community too understand how the impact is on, on jobs. And um, more than half the businesses had been reducing the number of employees or at least the number of hours. Um, and, um, you know, surprisingly over 20% did not have a change on, in hours or employees. So that was a little bit of a pleasant surprise. And then this is the last slide I'll show. For, and I think this is useful. It's, it was a question about what actions could be taken to help businesses? And it wasn't necessarily actions that would just be by the city, uh, but it might be various levels of government um, or in partnership with, with business associations. And um, I think you can kind of look at it from, from left to right with more answers. Um, the blue being somewhat useful and, and the orange or gold or whatever color that is uh, being very useful. So the, the answers on the left side of the screen are a little bit more focused, got a, combined, got a higher response than the, the answers on the right-hand side of the screen. And, um, you know, I think this, is, this was useful information at the time. And while I'm not sure that all these, uh, whether it's this, again, the city or someone else, another organization, I don't know that we've checked all these boxes as, hey, we got that done for everybody. Uh, but I, I do think it was a useful tool to understand what people were looking for. Um, and um, I'll just leave this. No, um, oh, this was the final slide um, just to kind of survey this, summarize the survey. Um, obviously, people were concerned about the city fees and um, and protecting themselves from evictions, those, those regulations, eviction protections for businesses remain in place for Albany. Um, lots of different types of technical assistance assisted, uh, um, are, are needed and supporting our business associations also is needed. Um, so those are all things that we could continue to 
talk about and develop programs for, if, if that's something the committee wants to recommend. Um, I just mentioned in passing a couple of other sources of information. Uh, the U.S. Census has a, a, a survey that they're doing across the country. It's called the Pulse Survey. And um, while it doesn't zoom in city by city, it does look at metropolitan areas. And it's a survey that's done every couple of weeks. So you can kind of see trends in, um, in how businesses are performing and some of the issues that they're facing. The other uh, potential resource is um, something put out by the Main Street Organization, which is a nonprofit and nationwide nonprofit group that did, I noticed um, we came across recently. They did a business survey of some of their, their membership, and um, I'd be happy to provide that to the committee, too. I was able to get that off their webpage um, that, that asked some good questions. It's kind of dated. I think it was done in the middle of last year, but it asked some good questions that um, you might want to consider for a local survey if, if you decide you want to go that route. Um, so I'll, I'll pause here for a second and see, I went over all this pretty quickly, so I'd be happy to answer any questions and uh, provide whatever support I can to the committee. All right. I see Jennifer has her, I'm sorry, member Hanson Romero has her hand up. Yeah, I just what I wanted to put in there, um, you know, surveys could be useful in times, but um, the big picture item here, I think that we all need to keep in mind is that city of Albany is one square mile. A lot of these other cities are much larger. They have much larger resources. Um, and, you know, I just, when we're looking at surveys from other cities, I just want to be really cognizant that uh, we want to pay attention to an apples to apples comparison here and not like try to put ourselves up against a, a, a city or, or um, different uh, scenarios that don't quite fit our community. So um, when looking at other surveys in other cities, if that's what we're going to do, um, just to keep that mindset. Okay, thank you. So, so just just um, kind of clarify for folks who are, are new on the committee. So, um, uh, the way the agenda works is we'll have uh, 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 Jeff just presented a presentation, and then we'll kind of open it for questions. If there's anything you need clarification on from Jeff, there's some terms you don't know, you know, kind of a clarifying question, maybe a little more detail on something, uh, and then we'll open it for public comment, and then we'll bring it back to discussion. That's kind of the way this is all structured. Uh, so, so. Um, uh, not pointing any fingers at member Hans Romero, but that was discussion. <laughs> Sorry. I'm Sorry, gonna, I'm gonna pay for that. I'm gonna pay for that next time. <laughs> yeah, okay. you're gonna get so, um, <laughs> so, uh, so are there any questions for, uh, for, for, uh, Jeff or anybody on, on the uh, topic of the surveys? I will say, I, well, while, while Jeff was speaking, I, I did bring up the, uh, raw results and it looks like there were 42 respondents. Um, and, we have, you know, you know, we have like over a thousand business licenses, but they're not all really the sorts of businesses that would respond to something like this. So I usually figure there's like two, three hundred kind of candidate businesses for this sort of thing. Um, and so we need to ask ourselves if this is the best way to go about it or, or, or if there's a way we can administer a survey more uh, aggressively. Jeff, do you remember? Uh, 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 um, how this was administered or how this was done? Oh Maybe. gosh, um, my colleague, uh, former colleague Claire Griffin yes. did the nuts and bolts and she's no longer with the city. So I haven't had a chance, um, I'm not recalling. I believe we, I believe we put it in our e-news and um, I believe we asked with the help with the, from the chamber and Salon Avenue Association uh, to and I think it was all an electronic communication to people. I don't yeah. think there was okay. any mailing on this one. I think I got a. Um, e I think I filled it out, and um, I got an email from the city, probably from my business. You know, because I had a business license, so um, I I think that's what I remember anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, do we have emails for all the? Um, well, I guess we're kind of getting more into discussion now. Maybe we should open up for public comment in case I'm not I'm sure not sure there's any public right now. I'm not seeing 
any public. Um, still not seeing any public. Okay, no public. Time. So now we can have discussion. <laughs> um, uh, uh, so, so we need to ask ourselves, do we think this is a valuable exercise? Uh, is this something that um, we're going to learn valuable information from? And I'm not saying yes or no. I'm just asking the question. What, what do you folks think? I think it's, it's hugely valuable. Um, and I think that we could uh, expand upon it now um, with the, the current changes in, in um, how businesses need to operate and, and, you know, what they need and how they're going to grow and how many employees they're going to hire and how they're hiring and, and sort of tackling, you know, uh, economic growth and, and development um, and seeing what they need because, um, yeah, I, I, I do think it's hugely important. Okay, great, great. Um, uh, and, and you see it as kind of a tool for, uh, you know, helping us, well, helping us help the businesses basically uh, as as we recover or as we move on from this pandemic. Okay, good. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, the thing that that stood out to me in the in the in the survey was that um, everyone switched over to online ordering and people uh, reduced hours for their employees um, and, yeah. and 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 laid people off. So how do we yeah. get how do we get back to um, a higher level of employment? And um, are do we have to make any recommendations to the to promoting online ordering, right? Um, I'm looking at the, the the chamber's website right now, and and you know it's it's um, it's it's solid, but it's, it doesn't necessarily link you to the the preferred ordering ordering for say like you know a retail shop, you know, or that you right. can order from right. Sprouts. Does Sprouts deliver? Who knows? Um, right. I don't know. Right. So yeah, 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 and and um, uh, I forgot what I was going to say. Okay, I, I saw a uh, member Carlton. You had your hand up real quick. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I was going to agree that I think this is good information. I do. I find the same that surveys are helpful. Um, I also think it's very helpful as, and that maybe there were if there are comment places for every question because a lot of times I know from my own personal experience when I'm filling out a survey, it's like, well, yes, but, and I think that there can be a lot of, um, you know, sometimes those those you know specific hand handwritten kind of comments are can be more telling than the actual questions that are asked. Excellent. Yeah, we're does anybody remember if there were um let's see we have the questions. I guess we have the questions, right? We have the list of questions. We can see if there are kind of open-ended questions. I don't remember top of my head. But yeah, no, I think that's a really good point. Um uh you know how frustrating it is to have a survey and your exact answer isn't quite right. So you want something yeah. to say. <laughs> I see uh, another hand from member Hans Romero. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just going to keep talking tonight. Um, <laughs> um, my my uh, one comment too is that what we also have to recognize and realize that when we send the survey out, we have to uh, really pay attention to the fact that, um, you know, many of our business owners, there's a lot of mom and pop shops there uh, and, and different ethnicities and different languages. And so when we send out a survey like this, it's all in English. So I just want to keep in mind <clears throat> that, you know, some of our business owners here don't, English is not their first language. And um, so we may, if we were going to do a survey again, um, maybe one of the questions is, would you like to, you know, I don't know, have, have um, additional help in filling out the survey or, um, you know, would it be helpful to have it in a different language? I, I just want to keep that in mind because sometimes I think, and also understanding that a mom and pop business, they don't have time to fill out a survey. That's that's going to go on the back burner. They're worried about running their day in and day outs of their business. They're like, what is this? Oh, I'm not going to answer that. Um, I don't have time to answer that, you know. So um, I think having that mailing or having that person-to-person uh, -person contact uh, can be a lot more useful than just like here, fill us out online. Okay. 
Yeah, I, w- I was going to, you know, you know, maybe we can pause and think for a minute about the most effective way to get responses. Um, I know that that I mean the chamber email address and uh, email list and the SA email list. Uh, they don't cover everybody. Um, not everybody's a member of the SAA. Not everybody's a member of the chamber. Uh, and I, I don't think that the city has been asking for an email address or, or even requiring an email address on business licenses for that long. Um, I'm sorry, Member Green, you're muted. I, I saw you were saying. Something. They do require an email address. They, they they do now, but I think it's fairly recent. Is that right? Or has it been around for a while? I no, think, I mean, I got mine originally in 2005 and I think. Oh, that, okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. We have an email list of over 1100 addresses. Yeah. And, and this went out to all those addresses, I assume. Oh, the survey, I'm not sure, but we recently compiled that list to start uh, sending out the e-news business edition. Okay, great, great. So, so that might be a new resource. That's mm-hmm. excellent. That's excellent. Okay, good, good, good. Okay. And and, and Claire's not here to, to answer that question for us. I understand. I understand. Do you really miss? Um, okay. Um, all right, so uh, do we want to look quickly at the questions or think about new questions? Did folks get a chance to look at the, the materials that were sent and look at the list of questions? And did anything jump out at you or anything you wanted to add or think isn't important? There's only 12 questions. Michael, I'm sorry, Member Petrilli, you're muted. I don't know if you're trying to say something. I was, um, just because nobody else was saying anything, I think I'll go. Uh, yeah, I, I did look at the questions. Um, it just leads me to have more questions, sort of. So um, I think if we're going to, are we suggesting that we're going to do a follow-up survey to this? So the idea, the I think, is that we would do one soon. Um, we would ideally come up with the questions now, but if it, it was another month, I'm not sure it has to be. It, it says March, but I'm not sure it has to be March. Um, uh, now, maybe we can, I mean, there's only 12 questions. Maybe we, Brennan, can we get those up and we can just kind of go down them real quick and look at them real quick and see if anything, yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, so we have just, you know, basic information. What is your role in your business? Uh, industry sector, that's valuable. Um, is that different from information we could get from the business license records? Just kind of in the interest of trying to keep it shorter, understanding that people are more likely to answer a short survey than a long one. Uh, it might be different. I mean, it, it might slice things up differently. I'm not really sure, but... Um, We'd have to click on the business license and yeah, see how that, that compares to the, you know, the the, the selection here. Okay. My guess is the business license categories are going to be more general, so there there might be value in asking this this sort of question. Okay, very good. Um, and then three is: Is your business considered essential under the shelter in place order? That makes a lot of sense. Um, I'm wondering if it. I think we kind should tee this up to be more, more of, of an orange or no, I, I think we should, we should restructure this to be um, uh, considering that, that we're going to red tier and then going to orange tier and we're projecting to have, you know, vaccination rates of X by May, you know, we, we might want to, as opposed to this being shelter in place, I mean, almost be prepared for, for reopening. Um, That's kind of what I was thinking too. We want to kind of think that look forward, and and this really isn't going to be so key. Uh, absolutely. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think if the focus were more on like, how do you envision coming out of this? Right. I mean, that's an open-ended question, obviously, so that can't be in question. But do you know the focus is more on that rather than like essential? I mean. I don't, who even knows what that means right now, right? So, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah I, I like that. Yeah, we need to ask ourselves what question, what are we trying to do with the survey? What we're trying mm-hmm. to do is learn how 
the city and the other organizations, how we can work together to help the businesses do what they need to do to survive and prosper. That's what we're, that's kind of the point. So, um, uh, so yeah. What kind of support do you need? What kind of support do you need? Yeah. And, and then, and then we can think about how best to deliver that. Um, right. Is it a, you know, a different kind of parking spot? So, you know, that's not saying that they would get it, but it might help inform advice on should we change the parking, you know, or advice yeah, yeah. to change the parking. Absolutely. And, and, and we can even ask, you know, what, well, we should ask, what are your challenges? What is really difficult for you right now? Um, uh, and, I would think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I guess some questions also you kind of want to, you ask the question to kind of put the respondent in a certain frame. So now they're thinking about their challenges. It's a little more concrete. They're thinking about what they're up against now. And that gives them a different perspective when they're thinking about what would help. Uh, another reason that's those sorts of questions. I think question number 10 addresses some of what you just mentioned. And maybe the survey is shorter. Maybe we just remove question number three. Well, that's, that's what I'm thinking. I, I think if we can make, if we can get it down to 10 questions, for instance, it's a little more appealing than 12, you know, two, two more. <laughs> two so more. Todd, at least for me, I, I mean, I kind of feel like I need to chew on this a little bit, knowing, knowing that that's what the focus is that we're going to do rather than, you know, make just split decisions tonight. I think I'd rather like to look this over and kind of, um, more identify, maybe this is something that we can do via communication um, and like send out the questions and like maybe ask the different committee members like what questions would be important to you and then bring it back around when we are actually kind of opened up in the red tier and and really hone in from there. Is that is that a possibility or is it too late? at that point. I think a preferred approach would be to establish a subcommittee to work on the questions and come back with, to the committee with um, some recommendations. So, so um, uh, maybe, maybe what we should do right now is continue going through the list uh, and then we'll be in a situation to maybe think about what, how we want to take the next step. Uh, I know I kind of got us off on a tangent there. So, uh, uh, so are we at number, uh, let's just do that real quick. So uh, what applied to your business before the shelter in place? And that's talk, talking about, you know, interaction with the public. Uh, where's your business located? A home occupation, Cleveland, East Shore, San Pablo. Um, how is your business currently operating? Again, that's one that I think we want to, if, if you know, that we're going to want that to be a little more forward directed. How do you see this? Yeah. This is kind of the question that Member Green was talking about. How are you going to come out of this? What are you planning to do to come out of this? But seven kind of addresses that. Yeah. Yeah. So you could almost strike six too. Yeah. I think you could, right. get, we could get rid of six. Yeah. Or maybe, yeah. 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 It's more of a shelter in place, very much so. Yeah. Uh, what do you, when you are able to operate? And I think seven is still even kind of under the pandemic and we're kind of thinking about coming out of the pandemic. So maybe alter it a little bit to think about that. Uh, number eight is how has your business changed the number of employees? Well, that's, that's important information. But again, um, maybe want to think about who, you know, how are you planning to return to your prior level of employment? Or you're probably going to keep lower employment. You're going to increase employment um, over what it was before. It might be more what we want to ask there. And do we want to know if they were supported in any way, like with the PPP or uh, EIDL? Well, um, do we want I mean, to know this but what, information? Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I feel like that's really a loaded question for, yeah. for the business owners that I know um, for a variety of reasons. The ones that got it, the ones that didn't. You know, also public information to a certain extent. I think you can you can find that information on the SBA websites about yeah, who got what. Um, yeah, I see. I uh, mean, it would be super interesting ones that that got additional support from their landlords. I mean, yeah, I could see. Well, I I mean, a very important question might be, you know, kind of, I'm not sure how to phrase this, but who took advantage of the eviction moratorium, mm -hmm. which means they're going to have you know, a year's worth of, 
of rent that they're going to have to pay um, somehow uh, because it wasn't a uh, no, it's just a deferment. It wasn't an erasure. Of, so they're mm -hmm. going to, they, you know, might be something that they need help. We're going to say, oh, we're going to have a real disaster here in, in, in three months or something. I think there's yeah. something to all of those questions, right? Um, but whether it's our place to, to obtain that information, what we would do with that information, I think is important. Um, I, I, I think what you're asking right there is key. So we can ask about the TTP loan, but how does that help us do what we want to do? Um, that, that's an important point. Um, well, and, and are then, there ways that we can support people better if they haven't taken advantage of that? Maybe, maybe they need some additional support that we could find them and connect them with those resources so that they would be better off and and being able to sustain their uh, their presence i think that's a great idea actually like if there was a way to say do you feel like you need additional support then you're not like kind of asking them did you get it because if, if we're trying to look forward i mean the people I know that got loans, I mean, that money just was gone within like five days, you know? Exactly. And, and so some people came out of this okay. Some people, some, some businesses just didn't and still actually do need some help. Or like with the eviction moratorium, they're freaking out because they're realizing now that they have to pay that all back. Mm -hmm. and and you know with uh with what just recently happened i mean there's uh you know they set it up now that if you have less than a, or if you have more than i forget what the amount is but more than a certain amount of employees you can't even um, apply for this ppe or ppp uh currently until a certain date until all of the smaller businesses um have been you know connected with or have had the opportunity to put in their applications. And I believe it's March 15th, I think, that uh, businesses under, uh, I don't want to misquote here, but off the top of my head, I'm thinking it's like under 10 or something. So I really kind of would like to, and maybe that's a message we really need to send out sooner than later is, you know, have you not gotten this? Uh, do you have less than certain amount of employees? Do you need this support? And maybe we need to get that messaging out now maybe not be for the survey but um you know something that is a tangible thing that we can help um these businesses who didn't get the first round or maybe don't know how to apply for the second round or don't know how to fill out so, the forgiveness loan sorry kind of going off no, this sounds like a really good thing to include in the business newsletter, um, maybe the next one. And we can just have them contact the chamber and the SEA because that's something that we can we can certainly connect them with. Yeah. We, we yeah. have that expertise. So so maybe we can ask that, a, you know, a little note be, because that does go out to that list that we've created, mm -hmm. the email list. And that would be immediate. That's certainly going to be faster than this whole process. So maybe we can ask that that happen. I would. Yeah, I'd like to I'd like to see if we can't get that expedited immediately. Yeah. OK. Um, okay. Um, looking at the time, let's see. Um, so it's kind of the consensus that they we want kind of another month to, to let to look at this over and maybe think about it a little bit more and then maybe try to come up with a final version next meeting. Whether we need a, a subcommittee or not, maybe just we all work on our own. We all have it and we can look at the questions and think about it. Um, and uh, uh, Jeff had mentioned that um, some other uh, surveys from others, like, like the Main Street survey, you might be able to provide us to give us some ideas mm -hmm. about questions to ask. I think that would be very valuable. So let's, let's plan to do that. I'm, I'm kind of resisting making another sub subcommittee because we already made one. <laughs> so let's, let's, uh, let's stick with the one for now and kind of work on our own. How's that sound? Does that sound all right? Yeah. All right, great. Otherwise, Jennifer is going to be too busy making another set for me. Okay. Um, uh, all right. So uh, moving on again, no attendee. Moving on to 6.3. Uh, um, oh, we just talked about 6. Okay. Uh, 6. Uh, the, the uh, I guess it's 6. The number is weird here. Uh, 6. The ED brochure draft. Uh, so um, we 
shared the uh, brochure that was developed, uh, I guess, over the last couple of years. Um, it was primarily developed prior to the pandemic. And so we kind of need to ask ourselves, is this kind of where we want to go right now? Uh, uh, did folks get a chance to look at that brochure? Do we want to pull it up real quick? Todd, I think I'd like to, I, I don't know if this is the appropriate time or place or, you know, still getting... Probably not, but go ahead. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Just in an essence of uh, time and everything else like that, this is maybe an item that I think I would like to see if maybe we could push off until we kind of wrap our heads around uh, the survey and some of uh, the other low hanging fruit and the subcommittee um, and then look at this later on because I think there would be quite significant changes to this and I think discussing it right now probably isn't the right time frame. No, I think it's an appropriate comment and and um, I think my idea was to just kind of bring this up and let everybody kind of see it and think about it as we talk about the other things. But yeah, in the interest of time, I think maybe we will. Um, I think you're absolutely right that uh, a lot of the things we're going to be talking about going forward will inform what we want to do with that brochure. So I, I think if everybody is okay with that, we'll go ahead and move on. Is that sound all right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, too much yeah, is have a right now with the pandemic, yeah. I think. Still wrapping yeah. up and moving to the new tiers, I think it's a little premature as well. Yeah, we, we want to be we want to be a little proactive and ahead of the game, but I think it might be too ahead of the game, <laughs> uh, especially with what we're going to be discussing. Okay, uh, so that brings us to the work plan item, and we have a little bit of time to work on that. Um, uh, uh, let's see for sure. Yeah, so um, we can we talked about the the uh, existing prior work plan a little bit last time. Can we bring that up again? I just kind of want to in our heads check off what's done so we, we don't have to worry about that anymore. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, uh, you know, this is broken down. We've all looked at this. Recent initiatives, accomplishments, that's all done. So that section's done. Um, we can pat, pat ourselves on the back or rather the previous committee members pat them on the back. Um, and, and staff and everybody. Uh, and now look at 2019-21 uh, uh, policy review and initiatives. Uh, so continue information of the strategic plan. And here, you know, they're kind of going through those, those items. Uh, identify options for successful farmers market. If I remember, there was quite a bit of interest in continuing that. So we'll probably keep that on the list. Uh, inform marketing and outreach materials, including the brochure. We've just discussed that. And, and how um, uh, that the final form that takes will probably be informed by some of the other work we'll be doing. Uh, assist in developing and analyze results of a survey. It sounds awfully familiar for some reason. Uh, efforts to business attraction retention. Oh, actually this is a little different. Uh, evaluate efforts related to business attraction, retention and permit customer service issues. Uh, new ideas for supporting local business, local business growth. So. That's more uh, what Member Hanson and Merrow was talking about when you know a business opens or we, we approach them and we learn about what the experience has been working with uh, with the business and uh, you know try to find some some pain points but also some opportunities for 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 uh, uh, excel you know being excelling excelling so the city gets a reputation for being really uh, uh, great to work with. I continue to provide ongoing input and potential business users for vacant properties. That's obviously a big issue that we need to be considering and uh, encourage art in commercial areas. I mean, that, uh, that. I think there's an issue with sound. Yeah. Yeah. We lost you. Yeah. Todd. Did he drop off? It looks like uh, now Looks like it. There. Oh God, I'm the, I'm the vice chair. I think. Does that mean I have to take over? <laughs> so, <laughs> so Todd, we're unable to hear you. The Todd's back. Todd's back. And Todd's he, muted. No, it's oh. uh, well. It looked like his sound cut out first, and then there was uh, another issue after that. This video. Where he left off was continue to encourage art in commercial areas. Mm -hmm. I believe. And then um, uh, I do. Oh, sorry. 
I'll go back to that one. I forgot that I was sharing my screen. There was a, an additional one that we talked about last time, which was the San Pablo uh, specific plan. So I was going to pull that up. But um, all right. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Whoa. continuing arts in uh, commercial districts, I'd like us to liaison and work more uh, closely with the arts committee so that maybe we could actually, you know, connect with them and let them know what our businesses would like to see um, as opposed to, you know, just just letting things kind of go. I got a piece. Yeah, so, so Todd, uh, Todd just sent me a text message. Uh, lost mm -hmm. connection. Have to reboot router. Give me three minutes. Okay. Um, and then just to respond to that, uh, Jennifer Hanson Romero. So the Why? previous, uh, uh, sorry, the previous. Uh, I'm going to try and mute someone. Okay. Uh, the previous, uh, sorry about that. Uh, the previous um, uh, committee uh, had worked with, they created a subcommittee with the uh, arts committee. So uh, certainly uh, think that that should continue um, as, as a partnership in this particular uh, area. Yeah, especially since now there's a new arts committee as well, so. Exactly, yeah. Uh, yeah, both subcommittee members, one for the EDC and one for arts committee are, are no longer on their committees, so it would kind of be a fresh start. Gotcha, and and fortunately enough, I believe uh, Robert Abrams, uh, uh, owner of Abrams Claghorn Gallery on uh, Masonic and Solano, who's also an Solano Avenue Association uh, board member, uh, I think it's going to be a great uh, collaboration with this group. So he's very well uh, knowledgeable in the arts community and has many, many resources that I think that we definitely need to work closely with and tap into. Sounds good. Is, is Todd back? Not yet. Do you want me to take over as vice chair? I think that sounds good. I guess I could. Okay. Um, here, let me just stop so, sharing for um, a moment. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I just want to pull up the um, specific plan so you can look at that website. Um, I guess we should open up the for discussion on the work plan and if we need to update the work plan in any way, shape or form, and if it's still relevant for the group, because it seems to, I mean, I'm, I'm obviously new to this, this group and um, I think that so everything think on the work plan. We're already going through some of the items that were checked off and, and some of the items that we were still moving forward with, correct? Yeah, that is correct. All right, and so we were down to the arts and then the other item following that was what again? The San Pablo else. specific plan. The San oh, Pablo yeah. specific plan, uh, yeah. Yeah, sorry, this was a, 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 an older version that I attached, apologies. So I'm gonna share uh, the website for the San Pablo specific plan just so you can take a quick look at it. Um, so this is, again, sanpablospecificplan.org and then from here you can find out more information about uh, this plan and um, it, it just kind of talks about the project. So just wanted to let you know that that is a resource, uh, sampublicspecificplan.org. And I think that, you know, there's been a lot of talk of, oh, go here and do the survey. And this is Solano Avenue specific plan. But I think that, you know, in talking to residents and businesses, I don't think that they really get the perspective of how this truly affects them or could affect them. And so I, I feel like we need to go more of a door-to-door -door approach and get people to really start to pay attention to this. Because I think with the pandemic and, you know, trying to operate business in this, in this weird realm of reality, um, that their, their focus is not on this right now. And um, only the people who are really pa overly passionate about this plan are the ones who are focused on this. 
And I think that unfortunately what happens then is you only hear a small portion of voices being heard rather than the ones that are really going to be impacted by this. And so I think that we need to have more of a, a direct face-to-face -face kind of or phone-to-phone -phone or email-to-email -email approach on this because I don't think it's going to get the attention that it deserves um, because of everything else that is is keeping our attention these days, if that makes sense. You know, I'd like to make a presentation at a future meeting about this because actually we've done some work on the analytics of our webpage and it's pretty impressive. Um, we've gotten really good participation. So um, it's not on your agenda tonight. You should focus on your work plan, but um, it, it, it is um, it's something I think the committee should hear about, um, both this plan itself and the engagement process, because actually we're, be honest with you, we're, we're seeing different, we're seeing more responses than we would ever get with an in-person um, planning process. Good. Hopefully my Facebook posts have helped. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. So maybe it, it, it possibly has. It's, um, you know, we had a 140 visitors to the webpage um, with over 500 comments. So we're pretty happy about that. Excellent. Great. Maybe maybe we could loop it into the survey as well, um, and yeah. and and comment or at least ask people if they understand or they 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 know what's going on and then point them in the right direction. Great, great idea, Michael. I assume we're talking about this. Uh, uh, first off, my apologies, lost me. We're talking about this uh, specific plan, the San Pablo specific plan. Is that it? Yes. Yeah. Correct. Okay. And and I would also like to draw their attention to the uh, the I guess it's the uh, the San Pablo Avenue corridor changes that are coming along which are even more significant in, in a lot of ways. Be sure that they're aware of that. Um, so my apologies again. I missed a couple minutes. Um, you didn't miss much talking, stuff. Okay. <laughs> a lot of, where's Todd? Where'd Todd go? I know how that goes. Um, uh, right. So uh, uh, the work plan. So um, we've talked about a little bit about the ones we want to keep. Are there new ones people want to suggest? Or maybe you've already been talking about that we have not talked that's the next question so, okay um so that would be uh, yeah and and again it's this isn't the end all we're going to talk about it next month as well i imagine but but any ideas you have for uh, our work plan again now might be the time to, to flip back through your notes on the uh the strategic plan item and see things that you've started or jumped out at you um, i i mean i would say if since this will be a work plan for the next two years, presumably, is um, trying to facilitate recovery. You know, what can the city do to facilitate recovery? Yeah, I mean, something like um, help uh, uh, design or, or, or help structure and, and even help implement uh, the uh, pandemic recovery efforts. That, that makes like I got a funny look from from assistant city manager Isabel on that one. <laughs> That's okay. No, I'm, I'm comfortable with funny looks. That's all right. Just taking notes. <laughs> They're like this. I get it all the time. Um, so, um, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's that's a really that's a, that's going to be a key one we can consider. Any uh, any other suggestions or? Now, can we have something on there? Basically, you know, okay we didn't expect this pandemic and it wasn't on the, the plan, <laughs> but I mean, are there, you know, coming out of this with the recovery and the resilience and everything else like that, is there, is there like open kind of open items or something that emergency related items or unforeseeable? Well, is there, it, so, so the work plan isn't like carved in stone and done. If there's something that comes up that's important, I mean, it's important enough, council will tell us to do it. They'll say, here, we want to okay. work on that. But if it's something that we think is important, we can say, hey, we'd like to add this to our work plan. And then council will say, okay, yeah, go ahead. Because it needs council approval because we're asking for city resources to be expended on mm -hmm. these items. So mm -hmm. it, we can't just do it willy-nilly. It needs to have council approval. So, so if there's something we think is important, uh, we would send it to council. Oh, yeah, yes, you can add that to your work plan. So there is a, a mechanism for, for adding things that we don't want to do. Understood. Yeah, because just like with the last city council meeting where they were trying to, uh, you know, 
they mentioned a couple of times uh, holding off an item and having our discussion over the specific item. Whereas I, I think that actually really the, the committee prior to us uh, had already given their direction and given their insight on it. But um, I do know that, yeah, from time to time, certain things like that do come up. And in saying that, I would also like to make sure that I encourage all of you to, to join in on those city council meetings, because it will give you that kind of background and insight maybe to some of the things that do come to us uh, that are being discussed at, uh, through city council. Um, and in addition, any of the other local committees um, I often talk about how pipelines are kind of broken and uh, the, the information isn't flowing as freely as it kind of needs to. And you need to see what one hand is doing in order for us to be able to work together um, and really drive things forward in a much more meaningful and effective way. So sometimes paying attention to what's going on with a, um, you know, uh, sorry, I'm going to say traffic and safety, but I know it's not traffic and safety anymore, but <clears throat> you know, uh, the different commissions and committees so, and so, the city council meeting, just to kind of get a big broader, so, oh, you don't have to attend all of them, but take a look at what their agendas are talking about. And if there are items that affect our business district, um, and affect our economic development, so, so I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of kind of put yeah I, I think that that's a really I think your point is well taken that it's it's good to uh, you can subscribe through the uh, the e notification and get all the agendas for the committees or commissions you might be interested in the council just take a look at the agenda and then the nice thing is it's all streaming now you can after the fact go view it as you wish so that's a good thing to do and be informed but I want to be sure we kind of you know uh, get through a little bit more of our uh, work plan suggestions uh, any. Anybody else have something they want to add? As I've done that now, nobody's going to have anything to add. I see a member Petrilli isn't sure, but I think he has a suggestion. Um, uh, I would like to add sort of what we talked about earlier, which is like identifying the um, uh, new developments and uh, and or vacancies, um, and potentially. Um, I mean, I just think knowing what's what's vacant is important. Um, I also think that the informed marketing and outreach materials, including a marketing brochure and promotional videos, I would probably um, want to add to that um, something about social media because social media usage is so much greater than it was pre-pandemic. Um, and, uh, you know, the city has really done a great, great job um, sort of adopting that in general. Like, you know, I, I, I find out about city council meetings because of Instagram. Um, and then the other one was about recruiting and I don't know how that, how that would work for us. Um, but, uh, maybe Albany, I mean, the, the, that this committee could support businesses by providing best practices for, for hiring, right. Um, what websites, what, what tools could, I mean, I, I know that, I mean, on the city website, there's, there's employment. I think that, I don't know, there's something there that I think that we might want to add, um, in order to encourage um, uh, increasing employment in the city. So I don't know if that's like, you know, stop using Craigslist and start using Indeed or, or you know, or what it is, or maybe having some, some, some place where um, businesses could post, uh, post a, a job ad, you know, and then we can connect uh, that through the, through the multiple email lists that we have, you know, or if there's an applicant, maybe I think that it might have to be on the employee side so that there's a local resident who needs a job. They can post their resume to this, to, to the website. And then we can circulate that. I don't know. There's something I mean, there yeah, I, you know, I love that. The, the, yeah. The item I'm kind of getting is, is like kind of a best practices guide um, for doing business in Albany. Um, and uh, that again might be something that's appropriately provided by the chamber or the SAA or something. Um, uh, uh, I think that's probably traditionally a role of the chamber, but I, I'm not saying it has to be that way. But um, but I like that idea, uh, um, and and it really kind of expands upon uh, the work that was done already on uh, you know welcoming businesses. We have the, the web page that welcomes businesses, and and we have the brochure. So that's kind of a nice addition. I, I like that idea. Um, 
uh, and it also kind of goes under, I think another item that was mentioned in the, the strategic plan was kind of training and outreach. There's probably ways we can do that. Um, but another thing that came to mind as you were talking, I think um, you, you started off talking about uh, outreach and brochures. I think maybe a business recruitment plan, develop a business recruitment plan. And, and here we could bring in, um, uh, you know, maybe some help from the, the uh, consultants that uh, member Hanser Moore was talking about that helped Hayward to identify um, kind of the types of businesses they might want where, but then also how are we going to reach out and, and, and help bring those people in? Because I think we're going to be in trouble if we just expect them to find it, right? Build it and they will come. I don't think is going to be working for us and I'm not sure it has been working for us. So I think, again, trying to leverage whatever resources we can um, uh, to maybe develop a plan for actually actively recruiting businesses. So I'm not sure and, how that would go, but and yeah, actually, the development of a that, business recruitment plan. Yeah. I actually think that that's part of their service, Todd. I could be mistaken, but that's why I, I want to get it, that. Is developing a plan? So, or an yeah, yeah, plan? yeah. I think that okay. they, they wrap it all up in a nice, pretty little package. Okay. Well, that might be a suggestion then that, that you know, obviously it's going to cost some money. So it would have to have to be something to go to council, obviously. But um, Correct. that's something we can make. Yeah. Okay. Well, I have a few items that I've thought about. I'll just kind of mention them real quick. <laughs> um, so this is something, and I'm not sure this is the this is an idea I've had, and I'm probably probably not the first time I thought about it. But there's that large vacant property by Target. It's right off the freeway. It's just been sitting there. It was a, a pet store. It was a, a tile or flooring store. And as far as I know, it's vacant now. Um, and I don't know how we would make this happen, but I think that's a good location. It's like a business incubator. It's a large space. It's near um, kind of a research facility. The USDA is there and, and kind of a USDA or environmental focused business incubator. I don't know if that's something appropriate for this committee to work on. I'm not sure how, what that would look like, but, um, uh, but that just is an idea I wanted to mention. Just wanted to throw it out there. Um, uh, actually, yeah, I, 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 one of the things I've come up with is, is kind of, and is in the strategic plan, and maybe it's time to think about it, is some signage and some branding. I know that signage is kind of an issue in the city because um, uh, the current signage isn't really, is my understanding, and, and, and Jeff, Jeff might cringe when I say this, but it isn't quite to code. Uh, and so if we change any signage, we have to change a lot of signage. That's kind of my understanding. Um, but that may be separate from kind of like the wayfinding signage, although that might also be part of the, uh, uh, so some of the, the broader plans that have been brought up, um, but that would be, um, uh, you know, increased visibility of business and community events via signage. I like the idea of getting an electronic sign at the corner of, of uh, out in front of city hall so that we could publicize um, all kinds of things uh, to folks driving by or waiting at that intersection. No, I'm not the first one to, to suggest that. I actually, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I also wondered if uh, I know that the state has changed the uh, uh, guidelines on sidewalk vending, so we can't really we they've removed a lot of control over restrictions on sidewalk vendors. I'm not sure how that much that affects Albany because I'm not sure that that's really something that we see a lot of. But if there's anything that we need to do to address that or consider that, that would be a topic for us to think about. Uh, and then I think maybe it was already mentioned, but I think we need to, to play a role in the San Pablo Avenue specific plan process. Uh, and those are the ones I've got off the, on, on my, uh, there's also, I understand a, a, a housing element revision um, that is gonna have implication for the commercial area. So that might be something we also need to, to weigh in and, and play a part of, play a part of. I mean, you know, a city is an organic entity and, and everything affects everything else. So I, I think that the Economic Development Committee can serve a role kind of helping provide our perspective uh, you know, on, on all these things that are happening. Anything else seen at 6.55?
Um, I, I don't want to lose track. I, I just want to get an update on, on you know, the, the first item on our action plan, which is the identify options for a successful farmer's market. Are we still holding on that until we get to a, a different stage or what is what is the actual status of that? And could we get make make any decisions towards the end of this meeting in order to sort of get the ball rolling again? Because last I understood was that it was sort of on hold, right, Jeff? Excuse me. Um, so um, my former colleague, Claire Griffin, was in touch with uh, Ben um, Feldman. Excuse me, it took me a minute to bring up his name, um, who is an Albany resident and also has been involved in, in managing farmers markets. He managed the farmers market that we had a few years ago. And um, the conversations that the two of them had last summer was that it it wasn't the time this, you know, in the, during the pandemic, it's not the time to start something where there's going to be an investment that requires, and it's dependent on people being able to interact closely together. So, um, you know, I think as we approach the end of the pandemic and the end of the shelter in place, um, the thought would be to bring Ben into the, to one of these meetings to talk a little bit about what the marketplace looks like. And, um, the, you know, the, the challenges are two, they're twofold. One is, a good location that meets health department requirements and is functional for everybody. And then the second is fitting it in with the schedule, the operator's schedules of nearby farmer's markets. So you want to pick a time and date that uh, where you don't have a competitor have something similar going on at the same time, or else you're, you're, you're splitting up the vendors who will be split, who will be providing products. Um, so it, the conversations were going on until about, July or August of last summer. And then it was just kind of put on hold because we didn't know what was going on. Um, happy to reach out to Ben again and um, see if he's got a feel for when it would be productive to start to first talk about ourselves and then to start going out with, um, uh, you know, asking for proposals from vendors, uh, for managers uh, of potential farmers markets. I would love to be involved in that. I mean, yeah. And I think that we should, we should, we should, I think it's a good time to sort of to start that conversation with Ben. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think there were some other questions that we had last meeting about, you know, what, what were some of the pitfalls of the last farmer's market that we had? Um, and then talking about, you know, possible other locations. Yeah. Th I would say this topic has a lot of history. Um, uh, not just, um, I mean, it, it was a long time coming to get that farmer's market that we had for two or three years um, and, and then a long process. Of, I would like to hear from, uh, maybe we can invite some of the former committee members back who are part of that subcommittee and just kind of talk, because they've been through this process. They've talked it over and, and kind of see where they see the problems being or, or, the, or the possibilities, suggestions they came up. So maybe what we need to do is have a farmer's market kind of report um, leveraging um, what, what, what Jeff is talking about. And then maybe we can get some feedback from some of the other uh, committee members and um, and then I think we'd be in a place to say um, uh, I don't want to just you know create a subcommittee and just them start doing the same stuff that's been done a hundred times let's, let's kind of learn where we've from what we can and, and, and start there so maybe next we're kind of now moving into the next agenda items maybe next month we can plan to have an agenda item maybe Ben's not able to make it I'm not sure how much but I, I, I do think we can hear from a previous committee member on just kind of where the process was uh, I think that's fantastic yes even even if it's just an email or a message yeah. yeah yeah just try to start where <clears> they left off <clears throat> yeah and, and then I think we would be in a, a place to say, okay, we can create a subcommittee and, and, and continue. Does that sound all right? Is, is that, okay. I agree okay. because, I, and you know, I attended almost every single uh, economic development meeting for the past two years. So I know that primarily one of the biggest issues was, was locating a suitable location um, that would work. And that was primarily the largest challenge that I'm aware of from, from listening to them. Um, yeah. So. I mean, but, but, I mean this, this goes back far enough. I was just remembering that when we were talking about the plans for the greenway um, uh, back when the BART retrofitting was done and, and they were about to turn things back over to the city and we're looking at plans. I was trying to, I was, I was kind of pushing for 
kind of a half block on one side of Solano just being paved, basically just being concrete, specifically for a community meeting space, but also for a farmer's market, because that is the best surface for a, a farmer's market. But um, we can see that didn't happen. But um, I wasn't effective. But that's how far back, you know, it goes back further than that. But, but this has been churning for a long time. And, and I, I'm hopeful we can make it happen. Uh, but I, I, I don't want us to just start all the way to square one. I don't want us to get start where we left off. Okay. So I Sounds think we're going to move on then to uh, agenda items. Any uh, uh, suggestions for agenda items? I know we, we have had interest in, uh, I think Jeff maybe promised a cannabis uh, uh, history. Again, maybe not the next meeting. I know we're all very busy, but, but in the upcoming meetings, we can have, uh, there's a lot of interest in uh, cannabis retail here. Um, other agenda items for, for next week, it would be to, I guess, uh, follow up on the subcommittee that we, that we created, um, uh, reevaluate the, the survey and, and come together and, and get some sort of a, a secondary draft. Um, also, uh, potentially identify the, the vacancies and the plan developments that are outstanding. And then I think that we all should, um, should really sort of, uh, become, a experts on the, um, the San Pablo um, uh, specific plan um, so that we can advise and, and sort of understand that and, and dig into it. Um, that's what I had for, for. Excellent. Yeah, great. Oh, very, yeah. very good. Thank you. And I think the specific plan, I think that's stuff we're going to kind of want to, I mean, we, we might have, we'll probably have a presentation, now, but I think it's something we can start looking on our own. Um, just that there's the very informative website uh, and there's a lot of meetings you can view uh, and I, I would just kind of remind folks about that uh, planning and zoning meeting from, was it October, Jeff? The, the one where the uh, commercial real estate developer? Uh, it was it, September 23rd, I believe. 23rd, yeah. That's what I noted. Yeah, okay, good. Because I, I definitely recommend you watch again, it's, you know, 30 minutes or so. It's, yeah, it starts about 15 minutes in. Uh, so could I ask uh, staff, to maybe email all of us uh, kind of like with, I, I like how uh, Michael put it down, kind of like these are the action items, kind of give us a summary of what we've discussed tonight so that we know what we're, you know, moving forward on, what we need to come come up with and, and be, uh, be working on uh, for this next month. I would like to add to that too. Let's 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 update the um, uh, the work plan as well, and make sure that we include. Um, I just make it up to date because I think this was an older version. If I'm correct. Yeah, yeah, um, we'll be we'll be they'll we'll certainly be working on that. And I, I think, uh, uh, member Hanson, remember what you're asking for is complete minutes, and that's what we don't have resources for. So I think that. Um, uh, no, no, uh, not complete minutes. Just like these are the action items, items that we agreed yeah. to do. So that we kind of, you know, for me, I, so many move, moving pieces and stuff like that. I just want to um, kind of summarize, not, not really, you know, give the, the meeting minutes, but like, okay, you guys agreed to do X, Y, and Z. Just well, um, maybe we can do that just real quickly right now. We can all just make note of it ourselves and then, then we won't have to burden uh, staff. Um, All right, Todd, can you take notes for me? Because I'm not in a place I can take notes right now. I Thanks. will. I will. Very, <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think we have our explanation. Okay. And if I can say, what we can do, what can staff do is we've taken notes on your work, you know, uh, on your discussion of future uh, of uh, work plan items. So we can come back to you with a, a draft um, work plan for 21-23 um, and for you to, to, to start working on. It will just be like based on the discussion today, you know, we'll include what we've heard, but you know, it'll be you know, up to you to uh, change it as you see fit. But we can do, we certainly can do that. That would be terrific. Thank you so much. So yeah, what did we agree to do? <laughs> so we created a subcommittee uh, that we, we mentioned to, uh, uh, talk about the, uh, um, I guess the, the survey, is that right? Or was, yeah, the survey question. 
Oh, no, the survey question is going to look at it. Yeah. The, this, the subcommittee was, was um, to uh, update the, to evaluate the strategic plan um, and go through and identify um, any of the, the action items there that are, that are most relevant for us right now. Um, all right, all right, great. Okay. And then I, I don't know how we're going to actually, we, we never made a decision on how we're going to um, update the survey. Can we, do you want to manage that via email? Just circulate an email to the committee? No, we can't do that. We'd have no, to do a no, secondary no, subcommittee. We're going to work on our own and then have it on the agenda next time. Sounds that, good. Uh, is what we'll do. So, so, so come prepared um, next time with addition subtractions uh, to the, to the, uh, the and proposals. For, yeah, for yeah for and I think for Jeff was year. going to supply us with what other questions other cities were using in their surveys. Is that not correct? Yeah, I'll, I'll put together a, a package of things that may or may not be useful, but it'd be at least at your fingertips and, and I'll have Brendan forward that to you so that you look for an email from Brendan. And would that. that be like in a day or next week or what's the timeline on that, Jeff? Um. <laughs> Probably early next week, maybe tomorrow. We'll see how the day goes. Okay. Lots of deadlines yeah, I, tomorrow. Not, not trying to hold your feet to the fire. Just want to note, plan out for my uh, specific, uh, you know, capabilities as well. So. Yeah. Because it sounded like you were holding his feet to the fire. Let's just be clear. That wasn't doing, doing that. <laughs> you know, those floor furnaces in Albany. Okay. All right. We need to, okay. <laughs> just kidding. Sorry to the sidetrack. Okay. Um, all right. So I... Is there more we need to say at this point or are we, we done for the evening? I think we're good. All right. All right. It's a little loose and casual, but I think we got through it. All right. Thanks, everybody. Uh, see you. Uh, see you next. Uh, hey, next thank month you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. All right. Bye. Good night, all.